Hi everyone, I'm Abigail Taylor and I'm from Henry County and I'm one of the 31 Alabama State Ambassadors for 4-H. I'm here today with Mr. Pete Cruz, who is the Headland Airport Manager out at the local airport in my county. We're really pleased to have him today and we're going to ask him a couple of questions about his career and how he got started. So I would like to first ask you, what was your major in college? Well, my major has nothing to do with what I do now. I went to Auburn University, War Eagle, and uh, majored in agronomy and soil. So I was uh, planning on working for the Soil Conservation Service. I was uh, you know, in the agriculture field. I want to stay there. I've been born and raised you know, as a farmer's son, and uh, you know, I'll probably continue on as being a farmer or working in some line of agriculture. Well, that's really cool. What got you interested in being a part of the airport life? Well, it's um, I think um, aviation has been in my blood all my life. I remember when I grew up here in Headland, uh, they had uh, uh, the helicopters from Fort Rucker, Alabama, uh, flew constantly in our area. They were preparing for Vietnam, and they trained a good bit of pilots here in this area. So they had uh, local landing fields and uh, and some of the pastures around our house. And if I got a free moment, I'd go over and watch the helicopters land. And uh, you always just had an interest in watching them fly and how they flew and uh, just like the aviation science. And I thought it was really cool to see them that something that big and heavy could actually fly and carry people. Uh, so I, I think it's something that was in my blood from early on. And uh, I just, uh, you know, I didn't act on it until late in life, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I think it's a calling. I think it's similar to, you know, some other fields for, you know, maybe uh, law enforcement, things like that. There's people, uh, it's a calling to go into that field. And uh, aviation is the same thing. If, you, if you're a pilot, you know it, you like it. Uh, there's no gray air. There's no, uh, it's, it's kind of cool or it's not. It's uh, you either like it or you don't like it. Well, that's really interesting. So maybe can you give us a typical day uh, in what your job is like? Yeah, I'd be glad to. Uh, but I usually get in you know, fairly early in the morning when it's uh, cool. And uh, we have uh, several things that we take care of there at the airport. Uh, we have aviation fuel that's uh, for the airplanes that come and go. And uh, pilots stop and refuel their planes, similar to a gas station you know, at a convenience store, except that uh, you know, it's for aviation purposes. And uh, we have to check the fuel to make sure the fuel has no water in it. Because uh, if these guys have a problem in the air, they can't just stop and uh, Check it out. So it's uh, very important that the fuel is pure and it's uh, the grade that uh, we sell. Uh, so we, we do that. That's the very first thing we do. Check that and make sure that's good. And uh, and then we are basically property managers. We have, uh, I think it's about 392 acres at the airport in Headland, Alabama. And uh, we have 190 of that is uh, row crop and agriculture that we rent out to farmers. So that's part of our management is to you work with that farmer and uh, work with him on his crops that he has there. We lease him the land and make sure he stays within the confines of our lease. And, uh, and we also have a good number of buildings there. We have 40 T-hangers. A T-hanger is uh, a hanger that houses an airplane, a small airplane, a general aviation airplane. If you, a lot of people own boats and, you know, second cars and stuff. Uh, several people own airplanes and they have to store them somewhere, usually at an airport. And uh, so we have T-hangers and I manage those. We have 40 of them that are uh, you know, for lease, uh, we keep those full. So if somebody's leaving, I have to have somebody to fill it up. Uh, that's where we get a lot of our income from is from the, the rent of these buildings. Uh, we also have several other businesses out at the airport just besides the Headland Airport. We have Willico, which is a powder coating company. We have uh, Calvin Knight and Trucking, they're a trucking company. We have several um, flight schools that give flight instruction, uh, survival flight, uh, that uh, they're a life ambulance kind of air ambulance company. And so I work with all these companies to make sure that their buildings are, are well taken care of. They have the things they need to run their business there. Uh, and if, if we can help them, you know, that's what we do. So that, my day is spent taking care of property and uh, managing our property. I know that probably working at an airport is a high risk job. What would you say is your biggest responsibility? Uh, I think the biggest thing is uh, probably making sure the pilots are taken care of, the people that come in to our airport uh, to make sure they feel welcome, to make sure they uh, you know, get a little taste of our Southern hospitality. So I just want to make sure that I portray Headland Airport in my best light and it can uh, you know, make them remember that they want to come back to Headland, that they like it. And uh, So representing Headland Airport is probably my biggest responsibility. 
And moving on to the next question, what would you say is one of your favorite things that you get to do in your job? Uh, I, I think, you know, talking with the pilots, sitting around, uh, you know, the pilots will come in and uh, they need a break from their flights and they want to you know, decompress and uh, all talk about their flights. So I love sitting around talking aviation with the pilots. That's always kind of fun. And we have a front porch that these guys will come and sit drink a cup of coffee or, uh, you know, water or, or soda, whatever they have. And, uh, you know, and we, we talk to them and just, uh, you know, you get their stories. And, you know, you talk to some people that have flown some very expensive aircrafts. And uh, it's um, it's kind of neat to see, you know, where they've been and what they've done. And you get associated with some uh, what we call the celebrities of our business, the people that are flying the jets and, uh, you know, the bigger aircraft that we don't see a lot, but they have their own airplanes and they come into our airport. So I think associating with them, seeing them and listening to their stories, that's that's the best part of it. And, uh, just, uh, yeah, I'm a people person, so I like to talk to people and uh, I don't like to be alone. Also, another you know, cool thing I, I enjoy is there, there are a lot of things I do during the days and my attention span is, you know, I guess it's fairly short, so I need to change up during the day. I don't like to do the same thing all day, every day. And, this gives me a chance to, to deviate from doing, you know, one thing for eight hours. I can you know, do the, something for, you know, 30, 40 minutes, two hours, and then do something else. And uh, every day is a little bit different. So it, um, it makes the days interesting. That's what I like about it. And that's really cool. What is something that you would tell someone going into your field? Maybe some advice. Uh, a little bit of advice for this. If, uh, if you've got aviation in your blood, you know it. You need to spend some time around the airport. I would suggest uh, maybe a small airport and a large airport. You know, go out and you know, meet the people. Uh, most of the people at the airport are very friendly. They want to talk and tell about their stories and uh, tell, tell you about their airport. No matter who you are, if you want to come out to the airport, people will talk to you and tell you their stories. And, uh, so I think it's important that they spend a little time at an airport, uh, get to see what happens during the daily routine at the airport. Uh, and if you want to fly, you need to take an introductory flight. There's uh, at all the local schools uh, that do flight instruction, they have uh, an introductory flight for $50. You can take a flight and uh, fly around in an airplane, see if it's your cup of tea. You may think it is, and it might not be. So uh, before you invest a lot of money in taking lessons, you need to um, you have a taste of it. So it's uh, just yeah, I, I would say spend some time at the airport, get to know somebody. And uh, yeah, I, I bet you you know somebody in your life that flies or has, has done it. So uh, that, that'd be the best thing. So in order to be an airport manager, did you have to get your pilot's license? Uh, that That's not essential. Uh, it helps to know a little bit about aviation. And uh, but I do have my pilot license. I got it, uh, I think, within probably within a year of graduating from college, I got a, a a single engine airplane license, and uh, but it, but like I said it's not essential. If uh, if you want to manage an airport, it's mostly about managing aviation and uh, having a license. It's not important, but it's but it adds to your knowledge and and it helps you take care of the problems that the pilots have better if you have that in your background. So, uh, but I also have a commercial hot air balloon license. I've flown commercial hot air balloons and uh, you know, did rides for. Uh, passengers and uh, so you know just having having been in the air having uh, spent time in the airspace to see what the pilots go through it, it's um it's very helpful especially when you're talking to the pilots that come into your area so can you walk us through what getting your license is like yeah it's uh it's uh, a process that uh takes you know depending on the weather everything you know is weather uh dependent uh, you want to fly, start flying whenever the weather is very good. Uh, you want winds slow. You want winds, you know, not choppy or, or gusty. And uh, you don't want any clouds in the area. You want a clear, pretty day. And but uh, you have to have 40 hours of flight inside in an airplane with an, and I think 25 of that has to be with an instructor. So you have to have a, you know, a certified flight instructor to help you teach you how to fly. And then once you get to a certain number of hours, you will solo. You will take the plane out by yourself. So I think I soloed after about four or five hours. And then, you know, the pop, the instructor pop will fly with you several times and you have several other things you have to do. You have to have cross country flights of a hundred miles or more. You have to have so many hours of not flying. You have to have so many uh, touchy goes, which is landing and takeoff. And, 
uh, just, you, you need to build time in an airplane and get comfortable with it. Uh, once you have the, uh, I think it's a minimum of 40 hours in the airplane, then you can take a written test, which is administrated by the uh, FAA, so you know, FAA test, and uh, you have to pass it. Uh, and then after that, you pass the test, you have to take a proficiency check ride with a examiner and uh, you have to go to where the examiner is. I don't think there's one in our area. I think the nearest one's in Tallahassee, Florida. And uh, they put you through the, the gamut. They ask you a lot of questions about flying, uh, you know, airspace questions. They ask you uh, questions about the machinery and uh, you know, weather, uh, everything associated with flight. And you have to pass both those. So you have to pass the written test and the proficiency test to, uh, to get your license. And then once you do that, you're issued a license and your license never expires. You'll have it for the rest of your life, but you have to do certain things to stay current in your airplane. There's some, if you, you'll have a once every two year biannual flight review that you have to go up with a, um, another instructor and uh, he checks you out once every two years to make sure that you can fly. You also have to have a, a medical certificate, which means that you have to be physically fit and able and, and not a health risk in order to fly. So, uh, you know, several things you have to have there. And, uh, uh, but it's, uh, you know, and right now it's probably going to end up, um, I think the cost for a total ride, get everything together, is probably between five and $7,000 right now that you'd have to invest to, uh, to make it work. Wow, that's really cool. Um, and I'd like to end with saying that, um, or asking you, what is your single most exhilarating or best memory as a airport manager? Oh, let's see here. I, th I think probably the best and, and the most fun thing that, that's happened is we have a fly-in. Uh, it's where we invite well, once a year. Uh, we haven't done a couple years, but once a year we invite people in the area. Uh, we send out invitations to fly in on a certain date. We usually have Saturday and we have vendors here. It's like a uh, harvest day we have here in town, but we have it at the airport. And we we call it fly in, so people fly in from all over the area, and you can get you know fifty to hundred planes there uh, at one time, and they park all on the grass. It's just really cool to, to have a park out there. Planes you never see and you haven't seen in a long time. Uh, friends come over with their airplanes, and uh, you know, the public can come out, walk around, touch airplanes, see the airplanes, and you know, maybe even get a flight. And, uh, we normally have a helicopter company there to uh, give them rides, and uh, so just the thought of putting all that together, it's uh, it's time consuming. It's a massive effort, but seeing it come off and uh, seeing everybody there having fun, that's, that's probably it. I think so. It's, uh, it, it's an exhilarating feeling once it's all over. Well, thank you so much for explaining your job and everything that you have to do in it. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me here today.